So today we're going to give you a very comprehensive overview of our NAWA system. NAWA system is obviously uh, divided into different parts uh, only for theoretical basis. As when we uh, give an introduction or define the nervous system, it is basically uh, composed up of specialized cells and we'll be uh, giving you the details what are the uh, different functional cells as well as the supporting cells over here. And these specialized cells basically, uh, perf ba the basic function is to receive the sensory stimuli and to transmit the messages to the effector organs uh, for a very uh, proposed coordination and integration of the effector organs. The effector organs uh, can be voluntary organs. For instance, it can be the muscles of our body, the skeletal muscles to perform different uh, movements as well as it can be the involuntary actions. Uh, that are performed by our organs, for instance, the heart, the uh, uh, smooth muscles of the small intestine, the kidneys. So even their function is affected or controlled by the nervous system. So this is the integration or the coordination that is well needed uh, to perform the different activities in our daily life. So we'll be going through the details, what are the components and what are the different structures uh, involved in the organization of our nervous system. So first of all, you have to remember one thing that basically our nervous system is divided uh, for the purpose of study, obviously, into a center nervous system and then we have a peripheral nervous system. When we say the center nervous system, it's basically this brain and spinal cord and then we have the peripheral nerves which basically extend to our muscular organs, the upper limbs, the lower limbs, even the sensory stimuli, the tactile stimulations from the skin are being collected and the messages are being sent back to the uh, higher centers of our brain and obviously they are interpreted in a particular way and even this this whole organization it's again very uh, interesting that there are emotional statuses attached to certain stimuli even so all of this coordination it occurs in a matter of seconds how does it happen what basically uh, enhances the coordination, what basically uh, compromises the integration between the complete central as well as the peripheral nervous system will be going through the interesting details and how does it work, how our body works. Uh, this is all that we're going to summarize over here in our lecture. So our nervous system is basically uh, commanding to the different organs of our body. For instance, if we uh, basically for the purpose of uh, studies and obviously even for the functionality of the body to take place, there is a sympathetic and on the other hand, we have a parasympathetic nervous system uh, that is present in our bodies. For instance, uh, on general basis, we can say that the sympathetic nervous system is basically the flight and fright response that is basically known as the uh, that is basically known as the sympathetic nervous system. Even if you uh, compare the uh, functions of the sympathetic nervous system with the parasympathetic nervous system, you can even coordinate over here that, for instance, if the sympathetics are uh, basically, uh, they come into action, what are the different uh, actions that would take place on our human or what are the different effects that would take place on the different organs of our body? Over here, you can see if the sympathetics, they come into action, they're going to increase the heartbeat. Uh, they're going to relax the airways. They're going to inhibit the salivation and dilate the pupils. Now, there is going to be a complete picture of an individual whose sympathetics are basically coming into action. There is a fright and flight response. And the person is ready to basically... Uh, respond to any emergency activity that is taking place. For instance, you can even uh, just evaluate over here that 
the sympathetics, they are basically inhibiting the activity of the stomach. They stimulate the release of the glucose uh, and they inhibit the gallbladder. So why is there a need to stimulate the release of the glucose? Again, as I mentioned, it is an emergency response. So basically the body is uh, making a function of the reservoirs of the glucose that it has. So these would be the actions that would be performed by the sympathetics. The relaxation of the bladder, the secretion of the epinephrine and the norepinephrine. So these are the hormones that are produced in the sympathetic situation. They inhibit the activity of the intestines as well as you can see that they are promoting the uh, ejaculation and the vaginal contraction. So they are basically affecting all of the organs from head to toe. And they are making the uh, body of an individual uh, more uh, basically, uh, they are preparing the body of the individual for the emergency situation that has been created. On the other hand, when we have the parasympathetic stimulation, what happens is there can be a constriction of pupils. It can be even the stimulation of the saliva, the constriction of the airways, as well as the, the slowing of the heartbeat takes place along with that. Uh, it's stimulating the activity of the stomach, it's inhibiting the release of the glucose, stimulating the activity of the intestines. Uh, contraction of the bladder takes place and it is also promoting the uh, erection of the genitals. So there is a certain picture that is associated with the sympathetics and when you compare there is a certain picture that is associated with the parasympathetics and it all depends what set of the uh, complete situation that has been integrated by the higher centers of the brain and then accordingly that particular system that comes into action and there is a complete uh, set of effects that take place. So we'll be going through the details as well in the particular uh, lecture when we'll be discussing the parasympathetics or when I'll be explaining the uh, sympathetic nervous system in detail. Now, for the purpose of just simplifying things, you have to just completely and quickly remember this thing that we have a central nervous system. And on the other hand, um, as I before mentioned, that we have a peripheral nervous system. So uh, when we discuss the central nervous system, it's basically divided into the brain and then we have the spinal cord. So usually the spinal cord has all the tracts and you can just say that, or you can just, uh, for your ease, you can remember that these tracts, are, for instance, you can just imagine that there are a certain kind of roads that are basically connecting the effector organs to the brain. So they are basically carrying the messages to the higher centers of the brain. And obviously, if there is a lack of communication between the higher centers of the brain and the effector organs, uh, it can basically affect the sensations of the individual and it is going to depend either the sensory tracts are affected or either the motor tracts are affected. And accordingly to that, the sensations can be even maintained in an individual if the motor tracts are particularly affected in an individual. So the spinal cord is basically a gateway and it is uh, making the messages travel towards the higher centers of the brain and obviously we have different subdivisions, the functional organization of the brain that comes into play and then obviously it helps in the uh, final integration and the coordination of the messages that are being collected by the uh, nervous system, by the nerves and they are carried towards the spinal cord and they are sent back to the higher centers of the brain. Now regarding the peripheral nervous system, it comprises of cranial nerves. So we have 12 pair of cranial nerves. At this point, you should remember that the cranial nerves are directly coming out of the brain. They are not being, uh, they're not carrying the messages to the spinal cord and they're not entering the ganglia. And uh, rather what is happening that they're exiting the skull through uh, certain exit points. There are different foramina that are present at the base of the skull. And these cranial nerves are getting an exit from these uh, 
uh, from these foraminas out there and then they are basically reaching the effector organs. So these nerves that are coming directly out of the brain and they are reaching the uh, effector organs, they are known as the cranial nerves and we have almost 12 pairs of cranial nerves that we're going to study and they have their different uh, functions that they have to perform. So then we have the spinal nerves. So almost we have 31 pair of spinal nerves out here. And uh, they basically come out of the, uh, at the different levels of the uh, vertebral column. We have the ganglia that are being associated with the spinal nerves. And they are basically a part of the peripheral nervous system. So here we got to know the general organization. We have a central and we have a peripheral nervous system and they have their different integrations and coordinations that they have to perform. And we're gonna study that in uh, detail in our different separate lectures out there. Mm -hmm.